Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome. Uh, welcome to the next episode of In Conversations with. We are doing this after quite some time. Uh, so today we have the immense pleasure of uh, sitting down with a visionary filmmaker whose storytelling has left an incredible mark on Indian cinema. His films have not only entertained but also challenged societal norms, shedding light on untold narratives with a unique blend of authenticity and artistry. Welcome, Mr. Abhishek Chauhan, sir. How are you doing today? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. You're very kind. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, great, great. That was that was great to hear, sir. So I'm going to dive a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, towards the beginning of your filmmaking journey. So while I was actually researching about this today's interview, I uh, came through that uh, you were quite inspired by French New Wave and other kind of uh, other world cinema also during your. Uh, during your training years, or like still learning never ends, but uh, during your training years, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the influence of French New Wave cinema and the Indian cinema at that time, and how it kind of uh, how it kind of you know motivated you to make films and ultimately become a filmmaker? Um, so uh, growing up in small town India, you know, uh, I had access only to staple mainstream Hindi cinema. Yes, uh, and um, um, and a little bit when I left home, uh, I went to a boarding school in Hyderabad. A little bit of Hollywood, a few Hollywood films I had seen. Yes. Um, but when I came to Delhi, and by this, by which time I came to Delhi to, to, to uh, I, I got admission in Delhi University. Yes. And I was studying English literature over there, and <clears throat> uh, at that point in time, I, I was, uh, I was. Uh, Pretty much a film cinema buff, but uh, with my knowledge limited only to mainstream Hindi or Hollywood cinema. I mean, there was there was little access. Even cable TV was new then, and you know, yeah. cable TV also used to show you mainstream Hindi films or mainstream. Yes. Films. So I mean, uh, but when I came to Delhi and I made friends over there, uh, local people, local Delhiites, I got to know that Delhi, uh, being the capital, has all the embassies. Yeah. yeah. And back in the late 90s, mid mid late 90s, even that time, I mean, film festival used to be ha used to happen only once a year. Yeah. Um, so uh, you could become a member of the film societies of the various embassies. Uh, you know, it's like the okay. French embassy or the German embassy. They used to run culture. They they had a culture department. They used to run film society, and and you could become members. And and for students, it was easier because they used to encourage. So that's how I mean, you know. Um, Living in North Delhi near the campus, we used to take a bus and then yeah. travel all the way to uh, Lieutenant Delhi, where all these embassies were, and uh, you could get access to. The thing that happened the, the, the first time I did that was it was a retrospective of uh, Truco. Okay. That was the first time I and and, and the first time I saw a movie with subtitles. Okay. And 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 there was just no and that was and that was the time when subtitle watching movie with subtitles and foreign language was not a thing like as a thing, unless you are exposed to film festivals yeah. and all of that. I mean, and I wasn't. I mean, I was I was still yes. in my teens, you know. So <clears throat> so it was and 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 the first one that I saw was Four Hundred Blows in that. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, and by then also Four Hundred Blows was a forty year old film. I mean, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, but that sort of, I mean, that experience of watching the entire retrospective, and I remember the screening of 400 Blows and my, the after effect in my mind very clearly. Uh, uh, it, it did something to me. You know, yeah. uh, you know I, I, I now when I think back on it, it was something like um, a realization that cinema can also do this, you know, yeah. uh, yes. can also speak to you like that, uh, uh, you know, and uh, that. It doesn't have to subscribe to the lowest common denominator. It doesn't have to subscribe to uh, uh, giving you an entertainment of a single kind of a single kind of variety, you know, which is which is which is star star persona oriented. Yes, it can yeah. be about themes. It can be about ideas. It can be about life as we know it. I mean, you know, and I did not know at that point in time and much about cinema, and uh, uh, even lesser about French history or society, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, but even so, the 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 language of film and what it was trying to say somehow it appealed to me. Somehow you know it had an it was an emotional experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, later, when I I mean when when I got interested in it, um, 
in college only but when i was when i started developing an interest i learned about the french new wave you know nouvelle yes. vague et tout ça is that up until that time mm, uh, this this you could say started somewhere in the mid to late 60, uh, 50s um up until that time usually cinema was very um, um you know in, in especially european cinema Yeah. was very very studio oriented very yes. very touchy yes. you know very yeah. very uh, set interior set oriented and these guys they literally picked up the camera on their shoulders and walked and yeah. shot the city the way it was i mean and 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 they didn't they had they had many problems with it because there was no way of capturing sound so they introduced dubbing and all of those things but yeah the compromise on the visual aesthetic of the film and that sort of an immediacy and urgency that the that this kind of a language provided it changed cinema you know yeah i think that was what appealed to me really uh i think uh, you know analyzing it, it but, and and i can say that as a film professional now yes but back then it was just an emotional experience so the way the films those films worked emotionally for me was something that i had not experienced before you know, yeah so like it, it was like a totally new experience like like it was challenging the very definition of cinema till like what it had it was in your mind Yeah. Then. yeah so you know continuing on that topic of french uh, new wave as you said that it was you know famously started to make films which were kind of against the conventional studio films which were being made uh, and also you know french new wave also introduced these techniques like jump cuts and all these uh, like godards breathless is having so much jump cuts and everything yeah. so uh, but later what we saw that in the 90s and everything when it was the time of tarantino and you know pulp fiction and everything so they started these nonlinear narratives and all those techniques which were once considered as art housey things also we can see now in mainstream cinema also those film making techniques and everything so now you are now, now that you are a film professional working in the film industry and i'm not talking totally just about indian film industry but the uh, in the world in the in the world film industry also do you think there are some sort of ground breaking techniques which are you know which may be unconventional today but maybe it may it might become a norm in the future so like because when jump cuts were introduced in the uh, 1960s when britless came out it was like it was like such a you know mind blowing kind of thing so do you think there exists some sort of techniques or anything now which can be let's say 20 30 years down the line become the you know the norm i mean uh, cinema technology is evolving uh, uh, yeah. uh, very rapidly even as we speak you know yes um uh, over the years what we have noticed ever since i have started working in bombay uh, i have seen technique involved evolve tremendously tremendously um my first film was shot on film i mean i yeah. uh, shot on film and subsequently all my films have been digitally shot yes um but when i started off working 20 years ago uh, uh vfx or cgi was a very small component if at all Yes. for film and we have to be very careful about the images by which shot but now vfx is a huge component and in fact the vfx supervisor is 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 a prominent technician in, in your unit as much as a production designer or a cameraman yeah. so uh, so t- cinema technique is evolving at a very rapid pace at a rapid pace and, and 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 what is also going to happen is that it is this technology which is coming in uh, it, this is going to help us evolve new methods or new styles of telling story new ways of finding new 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 sort of cutting or new sort of structuring all yeah. of this is also coming from this new technology i mean i yeah. think we are looking now we have something called virtual production so i yes yes virtual production yeah. completely yeah so i mean we, we, we've used a lot of um, green screen and blue screens but yeah. green screens and blue screens are going to go out now with virtual production yeah. coming in and uh, in, in small little ways it is already starting uh, started happening in bombay yeah we have already a couple of uh, setups which are offering uh, virtual production facilities i think a new film that has come out i have not seen it yet uh, but it's uh, the nitesh tiwari film called bawal yeah 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 virtual production in it so uh, so you know the, the kind of freedom that virtual production gives you right now we are using it uh, in a sort i mean in a way to create background or to deal with problems for example if i'm if i want to shoot a say a bike chase scene in, yeah. in 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 a busy highway in bombay uh it it is going to be very difficult for me to get certain shots because yes, bombay definitely. highway is getting permission with the traffic how do i make the shots so you so you scan the location and you put it on a virtual production and then you can make shots which were not possible to do 
Yes. So right now, I'm trying to solve technical problems via virtual production. But you know, if we start exploring the possibilities that this technology has to offer, mm -hmm. then it's it's going to alter the storytelling, uh, you know, entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you tell storytelling? You can you can in fact create fantastical worlds very easily. You can also yeah. do surrealistic sort of work, you know, very easily. Uh, you know, introduce surrealistic elements in a very realistic sort of setting by using virtual production. So not only is your technical style going to be dictated with the technology that's coming, but also the kind of stories you can tell is also going to be yeah. dictated. One of the reasons why Marvel films and all of that have come to have become mainstay and yes. non-Marvel yes. films today are so heavily dependent on CGI and VFX and virtual production, this, that is because of the technology. It's yes. not that people did not attempt to make it back in the 60s and 70s, but they look clunky, they look tacky. Now yeah. they don't. It's because of technology telling you what you can do. And therefore, such kind of stories are possible. So yeah. uh, uh, so, so I think, you know, the, 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 the old school style of in-camera cutting or transitions, they are never going to go. Yeah. They are always going to be there. And somehow they are somehow, if you ask an old timer like me, I will tell you they are the most satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But, uh, but technology, the things that it is going to offer us is going to be, you know, so what we are going to see in the next, say, couple of decades, is technology completely um, uh, dictating our style to a certain degree. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. I think we are looking, I think what what we should be trying and try to do is use virtual production and say use VR. You know, yeah. VR is coming in a yes. big way. But not just to tell superhero stories or not just to stay, say, you know, fantastical Top Gun type of films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also to make human drama stories in VR. Why can't we yes. do that? I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Why can't we use, like, for example, there is a dogma style, you know, where you yes. it's, it's handled camera, it's it's, it's completely yeah. unaffected filmmaking. Why can't we use dogma style to tell, to, to make a period film? Why does exactly. period film always have to be grand like that? Why can't yeah, we put yeah, yeah. 15th century Europe and do a dogma style film? So these yes. are the new innovations that we're going to be seeing in the next time. Yes. So basically, it will be kind of breaking the barriers and, you know, like, uh, like yeah, it, it, it's basically yeah, what the films have been doing. But at the same time, as you said that, you know, it will be respecting its old, uh, you know, from the old textbooks kind of thing. Because at the end of the day, even uh, virtual production, the the basic concept which was used was done even before green screen. So like when we had those screens, oh, yeah, the like, back projection, yeah, the back projections yeah. kind of thing. Sure. It's, it's, uh, yeah, sure. that was done in the 20s and now it's again the same technology the same thing, but it's just that the back projection you could tell the difference it was very difficult to mask the lighting yes <laughs> here it's seamless you will not be able to tell yeah um, so in in bombay like is this uh, in like in, especially in bollywood uh, like uh, i i saw a news that in annapurna studios in hyderabad there is a facility of yeah. uh, of of this uh, virtual production so is uh, in bombay like this technology coming and it's being going to be used in more mainstream films oh yeah for sure i mean uh, uh, up until now the big productions have gone abroad and done it i think in poland yeah. they have a facility which is uh, accessible and it's reasonably, reasonably cheap but now i think in bombay there is a facility uh, that Two facilities, one in Mira Road and one, <coughs> sorry, in Film City. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'm supposed to pay pay a visit, visit, go and have a oh. look. One of the pro productions that I've, 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 one of the scripts that I've written, is probably yes. going to have the need for virtual production. So no, they are there in Bombay. Also, we have these facilities. Yes, and also uh, you you were talking about VR, mm -hmm. like uh, Apple recently released Vision Pro. So yeah, the, so like uh, you, yeah. Even 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 like Disney Plus has already you know made uh, proof of concepts of their shows on how it will be on Vision Pro. So uh, so like uh, according to like what I understood that you are more hopeful about the future because it will be kind of evolving you know, the storytelling techniques. Uh, because right now also you know there is uh, on the, in America there is this uh, there is this uh, writer strike and SAG strike and everything going on against these advancements and everything. Yeah, there are also the unfair pay kind of thing. But uh, uh, what, uh, from what I understood, that you are also hopeful about the future because it will be, you know, it will be. You, you're looking at it as a tools to empower the filmmaker rather than restrict the. Yeah, film. I mean, you see, it's. it's it, it, I mean, uh, whenever new technology comes, humanity yes. always grapples with it initially. Yes. <clears throat> because they're not very sure of how they're going to be able to use it. Yeah. And there, there are conflicts, you know, and yes. obviously the producers in, in, as far as the strike in uh, the US is concerned, I mean, producers are trying to exploit the situation to their Yeah, end. yeah, yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> but I think it will resolve itself. Yeah. 
yes yes so uh, you know uh, again like kind of uh, talking about your early days so you also had worked with vishal bharadwaj sir you know extensively as an assistant director so what was the experience working like with him you know because of the films kind of films he makes i mean it was for me working with vishal sir was it was i never went to a film school a formal film yes. school that you know i finished college and i came straight to bombay and um, uh, i did not know anybody in the city so i got a roof over my head um, in zavier's hostel by joining the zavier institute of communications here okay um, but uh, i did not make much use of the course <laughs> i in fact just used uh, my experience in um, in in that institute just to gain a foothold in bombay yeah so in the sense i uh, when i started looking out for work i had absolutely no i i, I had a lot of film knowledge but they were all this was all theoretical knowledge which was gleaned from watching a lot of films yes but i had not really worked on set before you know and i yeah. technically i was very uh, underprepared so uh, in that sense working with vishal was a bit like initially initially in fact it was a bit like a film school for me because i was learning on the job uh, yeah yeah and i was uh, luckily i was a fast learner and i i took to the medium very quickly uh, and um, and the great thing was that uh, vishal as we all know was a music director to start with so he was making his first film yeah. he was learning to be a director while i was learning to be an assistant director okay so so in and and we both hit it off very well we became um, although he's much older than me uh, uh, but we sort of had this great friendship you know and uh, uh, and both of us learned together in, at different levels we were learning together Yes. so so it was a great uh, place of learning for me for the first few years and and uh, and as it started uh, during makri and after that um, i also started believing in what he was trying to do create us yeah. not only create a niche for himself as a filmmaker but also tell us tell stories a certain way you know yeah. uh, a, a, a certain dissatisfaction with the in, with the manner in which the stories were being told at that time yeah our mainstream hindi film and to find uh, your own voice and, and, yes. and say say you know to be able to say things the way you want to say so i i kind of identified with that yes. and uh, and i started learning very quickly working with him he also gave me an opportunity to express myself as a writer because he yes. said that if you uh, it, within a year or so i technically uh, understood the business technically very well i understood you know the camera and um, the technical language and the grammar and all of those things i learned but i could not tell stories because i did not have at yeah. least you know any story to i was not dying to say tell any story i was just very happy to learn the medium yeah. so he only gave me the impetus I and mean, he said that you know try and see if you can write because i think it's very important for directors to be able to write in this country yes and that sort of uh, set me on a path where i started to explore writing scripts and uh, i wrote a, I, a, it was a trial and error i you know i was a literature student so i was always very fond of writing stories yes uh, but uh, script script is another sort of a craft yeah so, so i learned it and um, uh, i i i i learned I, i did it myself i corrected my mistakes and i also showed it to him and he helped me along a lot and yes. so much so that then he gave me an opportunity to write a script and yes. at, at, that's really where you know my film film journey really started yeah uh, you know because it's not enough to know to understand the grammar of the craft of filmmaking yes uh, you know it, it's much more important to understand the more uh, the more creative aspects the more uh, emotional aspects of it or the most literary as aspects of yes it. so so that's how i uh, it started with the writing of blue umbrella and then home yeah. platform and all of those things so i mean and i worked for them for about a decade and and that deck it was very peaceful it it made me the filmmaker i am today yes uh you know you were talking about you know film directors finding their voice and uh, in instant and then and you said that you had very theoretical knowledge and you then you you obviously know about the otter theories like the like uh, like the otter theory i'm talking about so you know there uh, there was um, there was an interview uh, last year conducted i was watching it was of anurag kashyap sir and he he says that uh, there are not really otters don't exist anymore in like not even in you know, world cinema in much except cans or uh, berlin or any kind of thing and in indian cinema definitely not 
Uh, so what 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 is your take on that? Do you, do you believe that there can be authors in Indian cinema also? Like there was a brief period of Sham Benegal and uh, in the eighties and uh, that kind of period. And yes, obviously with the advent of OTT and everything. Uh, but do you actually believe now that now in twenty twenty three there can be authors? You know. Uh, so the thing is this that um, you know we as people. I mean, and I'm talking generally speaking. Uh, we as people like to credit ourselves with change that happens in the world. Yeah. But, but the fact of the matter is that things change beyond our control. You know? Yes. Uh, that's the fact of the matter. Uh, so. Um, we are. The, let's talk about auto theory. I mean, if we talk about auto theory, I mean, you have 60s European cinema and you have 70s American cinema. Yes. Uh, uh, these all happened for a reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, in 70s American cinema, what happened was that the, the granddaddy of the studios, the guys who actually started the big studios in the US. Yeah. Uh, uh, they all died. Yeah. You know, by 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 the time in the late sixties, early seventies, they were all yeah. dead, and a new kind of a structure was the coming into the studio setup. You know, and that kind of gave some elbow room to this new crop of filmmakers who were inspired by the sixties European masters. Yeah. Uh, it gave them elbow room because the studios were still finding their feet, and they, these filmmakers could you know come and uh, sort of make hay. Uh, you know, and, and and they made hits, you know, with like Godfather and things and yeah. French characters and stuff like that. So uh, they became overnight stars, and it created the American auto. Yeah. Um, uh, also, it created new kind of star. You know. Yes. But all that changed again in the eighties with, with Spielberg going back. Yeah. I mean, you know, taking yeah, yeah. exactly. the, you know, he made Shark the hero, and he, you know, I, 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 so I mean, these are things change in spite of. You know, yeah. our best intentions or our worst intentions, um, but they do affect things permanently. You know, in the sense that, compared to say the 1930s and the 40s Hollywood, where it was a completely producer-led model, yes. where directors were uh, directors on hire, had little control over the script that yeah. they were shooting and they were shot. You know. Uh, uh, it changed, right? Now yes. you might say that you know, uh, but there are directors who are who work like authors. I mean, uh, Nolan works like an author. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, he does. I mean, he does whatever he wants to do. He's the, he's the guy. He doesn't have to work in the studio model. He does. I mean, he doesn't have to work in the franchise model, mm -hmm. and he can walk into any studio and take two hundred million dollars and make his. Yeah. Film. I mean, yes. And, and his last film, Tenet. I mean, before. Yeah. Was a veritable box of his bomb. Yeah, he goes ahead and makes Oppenheimer 100 million. So, so yeah, I mean, and Scorsese is still working. So there are directors. Quentin Tarantino is still working. There yes. are actors in the in South Korea. I mean, what we what would you call bomb? Yeah, 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 pa, yeah, and even Park Chan Woo, all of them yeah, are and, working. And in our own country, I mean, you know, our own country, yes, I think there is definitely the, definitely been a time in in this cinema, specifically speaking. <coughs> That we've seen better days. We have had, uh, uh, you know, for a short period in the late 40s and 50s, we had quite a few visionary filmmakers in 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 uh, you know early Raj Kapoor cinema or Gurudat, uh, um, Bimal Roy. All of these filmmakers were working yes. then. You know? So it, 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 we had a good time then. We had a good run then, and yeah. then it all, it all went downhill from from there. But uh, and then we had uh, in the uh, with the advent of NFDC, uh, and you know we had a lot of uh, in again in Hindi we had Sham Babu and we have Gobin Gobin Nelani, these crop yes. of filmmakers who had their own stars like Nasir and Om and Shabana Ji and all of those people they created. But but you see the point is that that was uh, practically state funded cinema. Yeah. Uh, 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 and uh, and that's not doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But now what we what we do have is because of certain filmmakers in the nineties in Hindi cinema. Uh, I would say people like Shekhar Kapoor, uh, people like uh, Mani Ratnam, and people like Ram Gopal Verma. Yeah, they sort of created a new kind of a mainstream. 
wherein you know their source of funding was the same as your you know uh, your same guys where the commercial films of the yeah. same studios yeah. same producers yeah. to get funding for their film i mean where anis basmi goes even ram gopal verma was going there only you know yes tries funding him also and him also but they were making a certain different kind of film you know where yeah. they were trying they were a bit, they had the ability to uh, blend a sort of commercial what what commercial expectations audiences have of film and at the same time to have a certain aesthetic a certain language and a certain vision uh and those filmmakers really inspired a new generation of filmmakers subsequently yes. and a lot of them are working today so we are negotiating this sort of world you know wherein our sources of finance our sources of funding is mainstream our core mainstream but our telling is slightly off mainstream yeah we are not completely art house you may call it yes yes we are not completely independent cinema but we have a certain language we have a certain aesthetic we have a certain grammar and we also have certain um ideas that we want yeah. to present on screen so we have to walk this really this tight rope we have to walk yeah. uh so uh, yeah maybe there are no authors authors in bombay but we are just trying to make do with the, the best we can with the what what's available to us yeah you know if i if if, if today i decide to I, either i should be a, you know a, extremely rich by birth so i don't need money to make films but that's not true of me i mean suppose if i were that i don't need money to make films you know uh, I, I, and i i don't need money to sustain myself and i just make movies for passion then perhaps i can go and take certain risks that nobody else would Uh, yes. If if I can put my own money in it, but I can't do that, right? So I yeah. have to find a way to be able to true to 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 be able to stay true to my craft, yeah. stay true to my art, to my audience, and you know, uh, sort of make sure that I, my films don't flop so badly that I don't get an opportunity to make films again. So yeah, so it's it's a balance of both. It's a balance of both, you know. So that's what we are trying to do. Yes. Um, in OTT also, with the advent of streaming, uh, you know, the problem with streaming is that it's very cookie cutter. You know, it's a it it it's half TV. It's 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 almost it's almost like TV pretending to be film. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so it's very hard to find your individual space in it. It's yeah. It's actually harder, you know. Yes. Uh, but uh, the but the thing is that because of the pandemic, mainstream theatrical films have become very hard. Yeah. uh because nobody is really going to the theaters yes. so streaming is your way out because that's where you can express yourself and and make films so but the challenge is that how do you stand out with the with the clutter of um, you know yeah. within quotes content that is out there yeah uh, how do you stand out and that's the challenge and 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 you accept that challenge and you go and do the best you can yeah yeah that was a really good point of view and uh, you know now coming to exactly you know you were also talking about writing and why writing since you are also you know you were a literature student and everything so your films like have been you know often exploring you know like what we may call as unconventional themes like in general according to the mainstream cinema of that time especially i remember i was in class 8 when urta punjab came out and it was uh, a very it was a very unconventional theme for me back then because uh, back then it was only mainstream cinema for me too so what exactly draws you to these subjects and how do you decide on the stories you want to tell uh <clears throat> you know um how 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 one gets an idea as a filmmaker there is no set pattern to it. uh anything could you know uh catch your attention yes uh it is very rare that i decide to make a film because uh i want to say some say something you know for example uh i want to attack neo liberalism for example yeah. so it's very hard for me to hey let's let's attack this crony capitalism yeah so let me make a film about it that doesn't work for me somehow what attracts me to film is uh it could be a newspaper headline yes it could be it could be a character that forms in my head it could be an image a photograph for example uh so it's th- it's 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 random things like that that set you mind thinking or it could be a social phenomena yeah you know that that phenomena that you that you 
you know look at and it gets you 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 get you know interested in it and you explore it and research it and and, and you come up with it, come up with it so i mean in the case of urta punjab i mean what was uh, it, 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 sudeep sharma and i wrote it together yes. and and uh, i i remember speaking to him about it and what was what i wanted to do was that you know uh, what we wanted to explore really was that uh, it is not it, it it was a field that was open to us because you know uh, drug use and drug abuse is all, is all around us but we don't talk much about it as as a society and even less in our movies and uh, what i wanted to specifically explore was when when drug abuse becomes a social problem you know? yeah uh, so we wanted to explore that and punjab seemed to be a good setting for it because i mean it was uh, because of being a border state it was uh, going through it so yeah. so we wanted to explore that i mean so it was a phenomena that we wanted to explore you know? and we didn't know what the film is really going to be about at this point what, okay. is, what we are going to be saying because saying that drugs are bad for you is very banal <laughs> yeah. we don't want to just say that we want to explore yeah. it as a social problem as a political problem as a problem of you know the people who are dealing with it yeah so uh, so that's that set of thinking set us of thinking about it and we just researched the uh, the research the landscape for some time just over the internet and through phone calls with journalists and all that. and then eventually we went to punjab and spent quite a bit of time over there and all the characters that yeah are there in the movie are people that we met in one way or the other for okay. example doctor who's trying to treat yes. uh, 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 young drug users in in, yeah. in in a sort of a makeshift rehab center yes. you know, and that is karina kapoor's character uh, yeah. so those are people that we met i mean you know uh, um the cop you know who uh, i mean we, we changed it around a bit there was a we, there was a, 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 a assistant sub inspector that we had met who himself was a drug user for some time because okay. he has been you know dealing so so these are people that we actually met and then they populated our uh, story so it can be any so, so 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 that's how we got interested in it because we wanted to explore that i mean in term, in in in, in sonchilia for example uh we we wanted to do a sort of a um we were both fascinated with the emergency and we wanted to take a uh, take take a small little mufassal town in rajasthan and sort of do a, a sort of parallel of emergency that's happening in this town so what's happening at the national scale is happening in this one little town yeah. you know and some of the characters who were actually in sonjira were also part of this but then we as we worked on the story for 3 months we realized it's getting very bloated and very epic you know yeah. it's getting too big it's becoming like saga and you can kind of boring so so we just took out all of that from it and just just made a you know very lean decoy yeah. story yes. uh, and because we wanted to explore that landscape we yes. want to explore yes. that landscape we wanted to explore uh in a gritty in a very western sort of a landscape we yeah. want to explore in an action film we wanted to explore the problems of discrimination of yeah. the caste and gender that's so so that's how so so that's how we got interested and we sort of pursued it yes you uh, know in fact that also reminds me i was uh, watching uh, one of your older interviews you actually described sonchiri as a uh, decoy it's having existential crisis yeah. so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was very fascinating <laughs> yes so <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, as you were saying yeah so i mean it's basically it's basically got to do with how i get interested in something i mean for example in the case of ishka and dirishka it was the characters yeah i didn't have a story i didn't have a plot i just had a character of this woman you know and uh, self pitted against these two i mean you know this this, this one woman who is in the fringes of society she's a widow uh, uh she lives by herself she's alone she has no agency she has no power no wealth mm -hmm. and pitted against two men who are macho who are powerful who are you know uh yeah. and, and and see what happens what is the chemical reaction when this happens yes and then you and then i kept working at kept working at the characters and start started developing the plot really slowly in chick yeah. way and what the film is trying to say is something that happens to me while working in the film while okay. working on the script i don't try to uh, force myself or force uh, a theme or an idea onto uh, i let the characters create the characters and create a situation and let it flow as naturally as possible and let the themes and ideas emerge by themselves 
So, so in in a way, like you are also an audience, kind of going through the Absolutely. journey. But uh, but it's like a it's very long journey. It's like you are writing as as well as you are exploring it, yes. kind of a thing. Even yeah, even Tarantino does the like he. I don't know if it said this or not, but in the internet, at least it's written that he doesn't mm-hmm. know how the movies uh, end. He just starts writing it, and that, that's the kind of thing. Uh, let the pen write, kind of a thing. So and coming to another part of you know Urta Punjab, I I really loved its music and music has been a very important part of all your films and even uh, you know uh, that also kind of reflects your uh, you know uh, your uh, yeah like your uh, your your bond with uh, Vishal sir because he's as you said is also a music director himself and that definitely must have influenced you a lot. So can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of making uh, you know of uh, you know putting music as a narrative uh, in the narrative because. again you know songs and dances are uh, like they are unique to our indian films and while you know in many films at least in the 2010s and 2000s they were like part of the central narrative but later in the middle they kind of became just you know just to sell the tickets you know just the commercial kind of song but in your films those are not the case you know they they fit into the narrative very uh, clearly so can you actually tell us about that unique part about writing scripts especially for indian films where songs are also part of the narrative you know uh, uh that's, that's I, i i it's i've always had a bee in my bonnet about songs in movies you know yeah. <laughs> because um it yes i do i do appreciate the fact that you know uh, song and dances are a unique aspect of hindi cinema indian cinema rather yes but i am also against the idea that you have to have it in every film yeah definitely so you i mean it doesn't it doesn't make any sense you know that's yes. that's forcing film because that's just commercial consideration yes so um uh i enjoy doing music i enjoy doing songs i enjoy having songs because they sometimes help you uh, express an emotional move, movement m- moment very clearly very mm-hmm. deeply they also sometimes lend very well to transitions to montages and yeah. all those things. true so I, i i like using songs i don't have a problem with that um but i've always had a tr- have always had trouble with doing lip sync songs yes uh, unless unless it's a fantasy unless unless the character is a singer um you know i've always had trouble coming to terms with it and and yeah. uh, sometimes you just got to block yourself and if you're making a commercial film where uh, you know your budget is 50 60 crores then the producer is going to ask you know you can't you can't go so arty on him that you know, it doesn't make any money so you just got to block yourself and do it you know hunker yeah. down and do it and do it as the best of your ability but 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 it is it is it is it's it's not very easy you know and yes. sometimes it's extremely hard to do uh but uh uh I I enjoy doing songs. I really, I mean, I, if, if songs like, for example, like they're great. I I don't like doing lip sync so much, but I really enjoy using songs uh, to do great montages on them. Yes, because uh, you know you can express a lot of ideas. Yeah, and it's and and it's also, I mean, a, a, a music videos is great. Using using music and music cut to great visuals is a great way to entertain people. You know? Yeah, so enjoy that. Mm-hmm. so 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 i like doing that i mean so i really enjoyed doing dil to bachcha hai ji i really enjoyed doing um dada dasen uh, yeah in urta punjab yeah, yeah. so i really enjoy like a music great, great song cut to a great action sequence is great to watch yes. you know very entertaining uh you know so i it's not that i'm not going to have songs maybe yeah. maybe if i make a kotrub drama it would be silly to have songs you know but yes. just judge break out in a song i mean it doesn't make any sense So, so it's a bit of a tight rope. I enjoy doing it, uh, yeah. um, uh, and and sometimes if, if hopefully in the near future I make a big true blue Bollywood uh, mainstream, <laughs> part, then I probably had my hero dance also. I mean, I'm not saying no, but yeah. I really have to like you know, I'll, yeah. I'll tie my knickers in a knot <laughs> about what I'm going to do. It. Yeah. <laughs> I think the other aspect of music, I mean, you know, which I've always had a problem with, is that I did really even while growing up, even when I did not. I had not studied film so much. I've seen so many films. I used to find the background scores very tacky, and I, yeah. I think uh, score is of great importance. I mean, it's of, yes. it's of great import to our cinema. So I really work very hard on my background score also. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, now that you were saying, I also you know in Urta Punjab when it's the Tommy's introduction scene, that is the that is a lip sync song which he's doing in concert. But he's a, yeah. yeah, it's a lip sync song. But yeah, that makes sense because he's an artist. He's doing a concert. 
but again uh, like uh, the towards the end part of the film for which he also did in film companion that uh, director is breaking down a scene so over there uh, when alia bhat's character is actually hitting the goons over there also you know it's a slow motion scene and a background uh, song starts so uh, the, that kind of reflects over there yeah i mean uh, you see the thing is that uh, uh, cinema is make believe you know yes and what am i trying to do i'm trying to when you're sitting and watching the screen i'm just trying for you to go in a sort of a trance yeah and the and the uh, and the contract between you and me is that this is happening for real yes. you know this is yes. happening for real you believe it when you're yeah. when you're there for two two and a half hours you i mean and then when and if it's happening for real in my real life i suddenly don't start singing in arijit singh yeah. voice it doesn't happen, you know <laughs> yes. so that's that's a difficult purchase for me i mean you know yeah at any rate a lot of things that i do require suspension of disbelief but hero just breaking it, breaking out dancing like a michael jackson and singing like a arjit singh i mean that's too much suspension of disbelief <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of a, yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, and that also brings me to the third aspect of it. That is, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, talking about those shots uh, uh, coming to the uh, coming to Uttar Punjab. Those shots. That was a one shot. You know, where Alia Bhatt's character is hitting the goons. It was a long shot. Like Alia Bhatt's character is walking over here in white light, and uh, I love that analysis so much. So I remember it clearly. And uh, and Shahid Kapoor's character was in the sodium vapor light. But these kinds of scenes are, you know, what they are. They require. an actor and not necessarily a star so since in your films you are also are working with these big stars don't you find it difficult to kind of manage them because yeah i don't again i'm not an industry insider or anything but we always hear this news that you know the many stars don't want to do many takes but the kind of shots you use in a movie those they require meticulous planning and it's not only just the cinematographer or the director the actor has to be involved uh, has to be involved in it also a lot so how do you you know balance working between stars and uh, and you know you know what what should i say you know like uh, like pull out the actor within from them kind of thing yeah i mean uh, 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 i mean needless to say i'm sure all of you are aware that filmmaking is very expensive yes and, definitely uh, in order to sustain i mean that's why stars are who they are i mean that's yeah. why because they because they 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 get the people into the theaters i mean yes, that's that's true. that's an important function that they fulfill uh but i would say something about this new generation of stars in in hindi film industry a lot of them are very very committed actors wow. and uh and 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 they're pretty sincere uh, about what they're doing they you know this is this is thing about stars that i have noticed even the old timers you know i've worked as an assistant when i was an associate director and the writer on omkara i worked with ajay devgan and all of that work so they they understand what kind of film i'm making yeah you know if i'm doing a son of sardar i know ki achal na i mean why are you trying to break my balls i mean i'll just do two takes and it should be okay but if i'm trying if i'm doing an omkara i know it's an adaptation of othello i know this is vishal bhardwaj this is a different school yes so i'm i'm you know i i'm in for the right i'm going to do yeah. it you know like a karina kapoor who's also a very mainstream actor very yes. in you know she's um uh, although she made a debut around the same time i did but uh comes from old school bollywood yeah you know? yeah yeah exactly okay. you know that but she also understands i mean when she was working in odka punjab with me uh she would barely sit down on a chair she would be standing next to me as i was setting up the shot so yes so so they understand what kind of film they are in and they make that thing clear in their head they also are very good at figuring out what kind of director i am working with yeah uh and unless you are being very unfair or or or, or you're being rude to people yeah uh, they are in with you they are willing to give you takes and all of that I mean, yes. unless unless they think you are crossing some line or being unfair yeah sometimes yes, sometimes some stars are not very well behaved and sometimes yeah. they but that's that's like people there are also people there are some good people and there are some not so good people so i yeah. mean so it's 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 that, like that so i do believe there are a lot of stars today especially from the younger generation are uh, very committed very sincere also quite a few of them are very very talented yeah uh like for example alia bhat is a very talented yeah she's definitely, definitely. she yeah and she's proved herself above and beyond urta punjab also she's done yes. a lot of other work also where she's you know uh, rightfully garnered appreciation and um uh, and others also i mean you know uh, of her generation and many male actors also they're very good actors so uh i'm not it's it's not ideal yeah sure i mean you know that only stars should get the lion's share of great characters to play uh, in mainstream cinema but then it is not a perfect world 
Yeah. I'm sorry to say. Uh, so uh, as long as stars are there and they guarantee, you know, a sort of box office surety, mm-hmm. then the directors are going to go to them, even if sometimes they make this compromise that they feel that they, you know, there's this actor who is just an emerging actor from theater and he's brilliant and probably he deserves a chance. Yes. But, you know, if I, my film costs 35, 40 crores, who's going to, return, you know, so then I have, yeah. have to go to that. But yeah. as far as uh, uh, the, the conditions that you have to lay down to the stars that you're working with them, when you're working with them, is that if the role, re- role requires a certain kind of preparation, uh, yeah. you know, if you are playing, say, a musician or if you're playing a rock star or if you're playing, sorry, an athlete. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you're playing a cricketer, then you better, you know, practice for three months. You know, yes. you, you, you know how to play cricket. Or you know how to, you know, like for example, Paranakar went to extreme, to yeah. you know, uh, extreme training to become milk cussing and, and yes. that's because you know, yeah. So, so if they do the ad- adequate amount of preparation, which say Ali Adbhat did for me in Urka, or what Paranakar did in milk cussing, and they apply themselves completely, honestly, and seriously, it doesn't matter. You really can't tell the difference between having an actor or a star. Okay. That, that, that's great to hear. And before I move to the audience round, just one last question. And that is, what do you think lies for the future of, uh, you know, I should not say Hindi cinema, but Indian cinema in general? Where do you think we are actually headed towards? Oh, this is a very large question, uh, Shashwat, because I yeah. think uh, what, is, what is happening today is that we are going through a very, very uh, a transition, phase of transition. Yeah. We are in the middle of something. I, I think the previous, the previous world order is finished. Yes. It's on its way out and the new world order is coming and it's not come yet. So, I mean, you know, we are like, I mean, we are a bit like stuck somewhat in the purgatory right now. Yeah. Uh, um, because uh, theatrical uh, is going, theatrical cinema is going through a sort of a churning uh, and and streaming has, is, is uh, unlike the other challenges that theatrical cinema has had in the past, like video, or you know all of those or television streaming is here to stay you yeah. know and it's, it's 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 finding its niche in fact i think streaming is going to replace television more than it's going yeah. to replace cinema so i think it's a it's a it's a time of churning yes but what we can definitely say with surety right now is that a certain kind of cinema i mean theatrical cinema has become a lot about spectacle yes so Two kinds. Either you make that quiet, independent film, you know, like you, which goes into uh, film festivals, yeah. or or you make uh, or you make spectacle cinema. These are the yes. only kind of cinemas, and 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 the quiet, intimate films, unfortunately, are only going to the festivals. They are not finding theatrical releases. True. Even if they are finding theatrical releases, it's not good enough. So they also make their way into streaming, where they can find a home. Uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so I, <coughs> so I think. Uh, for now, what we do know is that theatrical cinema, the mainstay, is going to be grand spectacle cinema. That's yes. how it's going to be. Even if it if it's not even if it's not franchise cinema, it is going to be grand spectacle cinema for sure. Uh, yes. You know, visually bombastic and yeah, yeah, yeah. But the but the but but all other kinds of cinema as as of now, like even if you want to make a heist film, or it's not just about making human dramas but even if you make a heist film or a or say a film like uh, like today if somebody were to make a, a pulp fiction it would be a streaming film yes not, correct you know yeah uh, or a shallow grave you know it would be a, you know it would be so so all these films are making their way into streaming uh, and that's the sad reality of it uh, yes. and also streaming is kind of changing the way we consume uh, stories and that's that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just what it is, yeah. because uh, a lot of people are just, you know, all, on, on a on a local train ride, yeah, whip up their mobile phones and connect the Bluetooth, and they're going to watch something. Yes, correct. Now that that experience is very different. True. You know, that's a very very intense personal experience. You've got great sound, and you but you've got a small screen, but you're completely immersed because the sound is like that. Yes. So Correct. that's also changing uh, uh, how do we consume stories because what used to happen earlier is that if we, if we were to go and pitch a slightly um, uh, offbeat idea to, to uh, you know, uh, and which has, which has slightly mature content yes. for star, 
she would say that I can't watch this with my family. Yeah. Now people are watching things alone. You know? Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you you guys were in college. I mean, a lot of you are watching off your laptop with your headphones on. Aren't yes. You? So that that sort of consumption is changing uh, what kind of stories we can tell. Yeah. So I think I think what we are definitely going to witness in the coming few years, and I think it's, anyone's guess is as good as mine, is that I think we are up for change. Uh, I think streaming is going to uh, change the kind of stories we tell and how we consume them. I think series are going to come uh, in a big, already come in a big way, but they are also going to make their presence felt even more. Yeah. And uh, and I just hope that <clears throat> this this thirst for spectacle cinema in theater that evolves a little bit, so other kind of stories be also can also be told. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. That, that that was great, sir. And uh, now I'm opening up to the audience questions yeah. as well. Yeah. Ayush, uh, Ayush, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Film Society. Uh, first of all, a very good evening to one and all. And uh, thank you so much, Abhishek, sir, for being here, uh, for gracing this evening. I have been a big fan of you since the time Kamini had been released, and then Sonchidia and Udka Punjab, of course. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to ask is uh, <clears throat> many of the acclaimed people from the Indian film industry, like uh, Kamal Hassan, sir, and... Uh, SS Rajamouli sir, they have acknowledged this fact that Malayalam film industry has the best writers. Okay, even they have acknowledged this fact and kind of even I agree to them. So what do you think makes this Malayalam film and uh, uh, writers different from the rest of the industry's film writers? There are many, uh, there are many, I, I mean, first of all, I, I also believe in that. I think, I think Malayalam cinema in the last uh, five or six years, I think has been doing marvelous work. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and 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 uh, some some of my favorite films have come. In fact, just use using the platform to tell you guys that I've produced a Malayalam film just now, which is going to come out soon. Um, oh. So uh, I think they're doing marvelous work, and um, you know, I mean, there are various reasons for it. I mean, you know, why why you know something happens and a cinema of a particular region just takes off. There are various various factors for it. I think. Compared to the rest of the country, uh, uh, what is happening in Kerala also has to do with it. Kerala, uh, as we stand, as we know today, as uh, in the Human Development Index, is it's state, one of the states that are doing the best. Uh, you know, it it is uh, economically better off than a lot of other places, because of which the audiences are to a certain degree more evolved than other regions of uh, the country. So if the audiences are a bit more accepting of different kind of work, you know, uh, and as a, and Kerala also over the over the decades has had a tradition of uh, of beat films. There are some there have been some great uh, directors coming out of Kerala, you know, um, and uh, and and sort of they have sort of given the impetus for this new lot, you know, to express themselves, and there have been definitely two or three groups of different filmmakers in Kerala who have been working together and doing some great work. I mean, you know, you have, um, uh, you know, the the Ashikabu, uh, you know, that group, group they, they, they did all those films, Kumbalangi Nights and all of the, those films, Virus. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have uh, Lijo Jose Pelliseri. You have Rajiv Ravi working in one corner. And, you know, you have a lot of others uh, also whose name I can't recall right now. So, I mean, you know, at some point, a, a right kind of atmosphere is created and uh, a, a new crop of stars come in who are willing to do more experimental work. Uh, the audiences are kind of ready. They have found uh, their niche in their, in, 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 you know, films don't have to be very big. They can be made for a small budget and there is an audience for it. And it will ensure that these films can be made because the box office returns will be there, even if they are not blockbusters. I mean, mind you, mainstream Kerala cinema is as good or as bad as anywhere else. You know, it's this, it's these offbeat films which are very nice. So there is a small section which is interested in these kind of films, and um, and and streaming is there. So you know, it has also found um, uh, audiences via streaming in different parts of the country. So, I mean, it's a variety of factors because of which this is happening. Um, and and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm terribly pleased with what's happening in Kerala. In fact, there's a rise of a new crop of directors that is going to come very soon in, in, in Malayalam film industry. Uh, it's very encouraging signs and 
uh, and uh, but part of that is also there in uh, say Tamil film industry. You know, Tamil cinema also has a strong offbeat, uh, you know, culture. You know, uh, which I'm sorry to say, Hindi is still struggling with. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, sir. And, uh, you know, as you rightly said, uh, Malayalam have the best writers. And that might be the reason most of the movies in other film industries are remade from the Malayalam films, from the original Malayalam films. Yeah. So, uh, according to you, like, uh, I just want to know your personal opinion. Are you against remakes uh, or in favor of remakes? Well, you know, uh, I, I... remakes are great if there is going to be a radical sort of a reinterpretation of the material uh, you know um, and I'm speaking purely as an artist myself if I were mm. to I, I was asked as uh, to do a remake I would only be interested in doing if I could radically reinterpret it you know and lo I'm looking at remakes say for example I adapted Othello many years ago so for me Othello is already an existing text if I can just do something new with it look at it in a completely new light in a different way I'm interested but if it's another film, I look at it in the same way that if I can reinterpret it completely and give my two bits to it and add my personality to it, then I don't see technically a problem with it. The problem, unfortunately, is that remakes are not made for those reasons. Remakes are made because, look, this has worked very well in uh, Kerala. So there's a possibility Hindi audiences will also like to watch this. So you make the film as it was made in Malayalam. Now, that doesn't work for me because then you don't need you know, a filmmaker, you, you just need somebody who can just, you know, copy paste the shots uh, in a different language. So that doesn't excite me so much. Uh, so theoretically, I'm not against remakes, but I would definitely want to know what is the intention behind it. Hmm, definitely. That might be the reason uh, Drishyam was, uh, uh, you know, a blockbuster in Malayalam as well and in Bollywood as well, because Ajay Devgan and the writers had introduced their unique tincture, tincture in both of the industries. Sure. And as you rightly said, you're producing a Malayalam film. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Uh, we you all are excited. With... Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, Film Society. Thank you. Thank you, Ayush. Thank you for your question. Uh, the next question is from Amit Kumar Sharma. He has uh, written it in chat and he's written quite long back. So his question is that uh, your films showcase a distinct creative style that captivates the audience. Could you tell us about your approach to creating and developing a film from its inception to the final product? That's a that's a big question. You <laughs> you've answered for part of it, and um, so like uh, the second part of it is that how uh, do you nurture and refine your ideas, and what elements are crucial for you in ensuring that your vision is translated effectively onto the screen? So you can choose to answer the second part, uh, uh, the parts which are not. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, I. I I'll try and be as brief as possible about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Uh, you know, you get an idea and then you mull over that idea for some time. The idea stays in your head uh, because a lot of bad ideas just go out of the window and you forget yes. about them. An idea stays on your head and then then it starts cooking. I like to work uh, after a point after an idea has stayed in my head in my consciousness for a while. I like to then collaborate with somebody and then we start developing the story. Uh, how we write a script uh, very quickly is that uh, we suppose if I were to say the script writing process is going to be six months long. Yeah, it has taken me various. I've written scripts in one and a half months. Also, I've written scripts in two years. Also, yeah. But let's just for just for sake of discussion, suppose the script writing process is six months long. Uh, then, say for I don't write very quickly for about half of that time for about three months i'm just going to be discussing with my collaborator just discussing the story the characters various things about it scenes all i mean it's it's a, it's a it's, it's not so much a structured discussion yes. you know we just go wherever we want to go and just get familiar with the story that we're trying to create you know get right. closer to it and not structure it so much after we have reached a point where we are feeling satisfied with that we know enough about this material to be able to write it. Then we start structuring it and I do index cards, which means I just write one line, the scene in one line, okay. no fancy stuff, right. nothing fancy about it. You know what my creativity is, what the lighting is going to be, what the mood of the story is going to be, none of that stuff, just bare bones, you know, A kills B. Okay. 
he drives car to stop you know simple and these bare bones we do index cards and we just put it on a board one after the other and we see the whole flow of the story as it's going to be okay this works where the bare bones structure of it works and then we make adjustments to that index card structure until we are satisfied with it and then when we are satisfied with it we start doing the beat sheet which is now yes. developing that one lines into scenes which yeah. are scenes written in one or two paragraphs whatever we know about the scene again not elaborating too much we don't want to get too creative we just want to write down the story for what it the getting the story right is of the essence yes and then once that is done in the last one month or so is when we really write the script okay so like the, the, the like that format like interior exterior all that that last happens one, one one last 45 days and okay. then you're just working on the script just oh, get wow. the story right Wow, wow. So this is my method. A lot of filmmakers don't do this. A lot of filmmakers yes. just try with start with exterior day yeah. whatever. No, that's yeah. their method. Yes. And there is no one way to reach God. I mean, you know, yes. you can you exactly. can go take whatever works for you. Yes. So yes, yes. Uh, so that's how I mean, and then finally you do your first draft like that, and first draft more often than not is not a great one. Yes. So you take feedback, you give it to people you trust, then you rework those drafts. and then you reach a point where you pitch it yes and then a producer is foolish enough to you know <laughs> pay you for it and yes. come yes. for the side and then uh, and then uh, starts the extremely painful part of casting it and then as far as <clears throat> vision you said how do you so you have to be uh, when you're a filmmaker when you're a director you have to be you have to wear many hats yeah correct you have to be uh, you can you have to be a drill sergeant you know yeah. completely unemotionless completely cruel brutal making sure people do their jobs on time and you also have to be a psychiatrist a psychoanalyst where you have to help yeah. people you yes. know get to do their best so you have to play many roles many hats you actually if you think about it you are not doing anything yeah the cameraman is working with the camera the sound recorders is recording the production designers building the set the costume designers the actors acting you are not doing anything yeah. you are telling <laughs> what to do yeah so, So you are just uh, watching them uh, and and making sure that you know things are done right. Sometimes the elements are against you. Sometimes the budget is not in your favor. Sometimes the weather is not in your favor. Yes. Sometimes one of the technicians on the actor does not agree with you. Yeah. And and uh, sometimes they are even right. So you need to have the. the you have to have the intelligence to understand that you're wrong and take a step back and say no you're right we agree or sometimes when you know that they are making the statement very passionately but they are wrong <coughs> so you have to figure out a way to shut them up also. <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah ultimately uh, you are responsible yeah. for it yeah to realize that ultimately you are going to be responsible for it this moment might be painful but this movie that you make is going to be there forever yeah correct party at 875 as a shit i should have taken that shot better you can't say that Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Amit, for that question. And uh, we unfortunately have time only for one more question. So, uh, Vishal, by the way, your question I think has been answered already in this. And I'm gonna ask question already. Sir told in the beginning the future of it. Uh, so the last question is from Satyaki. Uh, so I'm taking one of his question, and that is, if the world ends tomorrow, which would be the last film you'd like to watch? Watch is it? Yes. uh the last film that i would want like to watch wow man very tough question <laughs> <laughs> uh perhaps i would like like to watch uh bergman's persona okay bergman's film okay wow that that that's a that's a very you know at least i was expecting some new film but wow mm -hmm. that's <laughs> no i i mean apart from yes. the fact it's a great film i have many memories of it also. okay okay yeah, yeah yeah there are many correct correct and uh, aditya sorry i i don't think we have the time so i'm really sorry because you know uh, this has been going on uh, so thank you sir you know it, it was really a it was really a great time uh, we you know we hope that uh, you know you enjoyed this uh, as much as we you know also enjoyed and learned from you over here and uh, with that we would like to you know stop the recording uh, thank you again thank you and very much guys thank you for listening yes, yes. thank, thank you. you sir